Hello everyone, I am Kathy Hunsai and together with my partner Francis Gallo, we will talk about the interactional view of Paul Watzlawick. So let's begin. The interactional view. So the interactional view is founded by Paul Watzlawick. He is a senior researcher at Palo Alto, California. He is with 20 scholars that is inspired and worked with Gregory Bateson, an anthropologist. They are called the Palo Alto researchers. So the Palo Alto researchers study the interpersonal interaction as part of the entire system. They focused on how behavior affects everyone in the group. So the interactional view is about each behavior of another affects and is affected by the behavior of another. It is like communicating others and influencing them. At the same time, they influence us. So, Watzlawick formed the interactional view by looking at the dysfunction pattern of the family. So, he uses the family as the system. The family system is each family member is tied by a string. The string represents communication. And if the string is pulled, the whole system is disturbed. So, Watzlawick also uses math metaphor to describe the family relationship. According to him, family relationship is not simple, just like the first equation. Rather, it is the second equation. It is complex, just like the mathematical functions linked to multiple variables. You see, the variables a, b, c, or d affects the variable x. It is either represents attitudes, emotions, or physical conditions. So in his book titled Pragmatics of Human Communication, along with Janet Bavelas and Don Jackson, he said each family creates its own reality. He also introduces an analogy, the rules of the game, which he defines the games as sequences of behavior governed by rules. But Slavik compared the communication to a game. Just like the game, communication was set by rules. Family homostasis. It is the tacit collusion of family members <clears throat> to maintain the status quo. To simplify, it is the family members' cooperation to maintain the balance. To maintain the status quo or the balance, one must understand the actions or the rules of communication. So, Watzlawick outlined four actions of interpersonal communication. So first, one cannot not communicate. Second, commu every communication has a content and a relationship. Third is punctuate the communication sequence. Lastly, all communication is either symmetrical or complementary. The first action, one cannot not communicate, means we are always communicating because of our body language or signals that are easily read or what Watzlawick called symptom strategy. For example, you have a headache. Your mother asked you, are you okay? And you would just reply, yes, I'm fine, but you are looking weak. So your mother analyzed these signals and conclude that you are not okay you are not there's something wrong with you so therefore it is impossible to not communicate the next action is every communication has a content and a relationship the levels of communication the content refers to the actual subject matter of what is being discussed it is like the information based on the message while the relationship is how the two communicators view one another and how they convey it. Veslavik wrote, This is how I see myself. This is how I see you. This is how you seeing me. It is the, the way you understand or inter interpret the message. So for example, someone says, You're late. The content refers to time. It is the message of the statement while the relationship aspect implies criticism 
it says you're late because your lack of concern or you're late because your lack of responsibility so therefore the second axiom is to teach us how to prevent leaving an unintended negative expression with people it is how to read and you and your communication styles are received so the next action would be discussed with my partner hello everyone so before i would continue the discussion let me tell you about the story of the franklin family so the members of the franklin family are successful sonia who is the mother and stan who is the father are professionals Lori, who is their daughter is a school achiever and is part of the tennis club their son mike however is an alcoholic and a drug addict making the family disturbed stan lacks concern about the situation as he thinks it is a phase that his son will get over soon Lori feels responsible for her brother and tries different ways for him to quit while sonia however tries to shield Mike from the consequences of his actions and nags her husband for his lack of concern which makes Stan withdraws from her. So after learning about the Franklin family, let's now continue the discussion. So the third axiom is the nature of our relationship depends on how both parties punctuate the communication sequence. So in this axiom, we will need to understand the word punctuate. So by punctuate, it means to interpret an ongoing sequence of events by labeling one event as the cause and the following event as the response. In a situation with communication, if one thing happens, something else always happens. So let's take the game between Sonia and Stan as an example. So Stan as the husband and Sonia as the wife. The wife nags the husband and therefore the husband withdraws from his wife. Seeing this, the wife nags the husband and therefore the husband once again withdraws from his wife. And so on and so forth. This becomes an endless cycle of nagging and withdrawal. Both the sender and the receiver of information sees the communication differently and therefore interpret their own behavior as a reaction to the other's behavior. So this is an example of what means to punctuate. The nature of their relationship depends on that punctuation. And in order for them to sort things out, they need something called metacommunication. Metacommunication is to communicate about the way we are communicating. We communicate to know how words are said and know how we should interpret them. So the fourth axiom is, all communication is either symmetrical or complementary. So by means of symmetrical, it is the interaction based on equal power, while complementary, it means interaction based on accepted difference in power. For an example of symmetrical, relationship between two siblings with different interests. Siblings have the same responsibilities and standing in a family and therefore are equals. Them having different interests would mean that they will not compete to whether who is greater than the other as their strengths are in different fields. So an example of complementary is relationship of parent and child. So in a household, we, we all know that our parents are the ones who hold the power. And we as their children are obliged to respect and obey them as we are living under their roofs. So in order to label our relationship, one must hear at least two messages. A statement from one person and a response from another. In a complementary relationship, we must know who is in control. So in this situation, there are three types. One up communication to gain control, one down communication to yield control, and one across communication or transitory communication to neutralize control. So family systems, what are family systems? So family system is our self-regulating interdependent network of feedback loops guided by a member's rules. 
The behavior of each person affects and is affected by the behavior of another. So let's keep in mind about the Franklin family. The family systems are highly resistant to change. This inertia is apparent, especially in a home where one member has an addiction. Each family member occupies a role that serves as a status quo. In the Franklin family, Mike of course is the one with the problem. With the best of intentions, Sonia, who is the mother, is the enabler who cautions Mike from feeling pain caused by his chemical abuse. Stan, who is the father, is the denier, while Laurie is the family hero who compensates for her brother's failure. According to family therapists, when one person in a distressed family gets better, another person would most likely get worse. So let's take Mike for an example. If Mike stopped drinking and using pot, Laurie might creep the tennis team, ignore her studies, or start smoking pot herself. Dysfunctional families confirm the adage, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Vatslavik saw family members as often caught in a double bind. So a double bind is a person trapped under mutually exclusive expectations. The paradox of a double bind is that a high status party in a complementary relationship insists that the low status person act as if the relationship were symmetrical, which in fact is not. So in regards to the Franklin family, they are described as dysfunctional and disturbed. In what way could they break out from that point and go to another point wherein they are able to relate to one another? According to Václavík, it is through reframing. So reframing is the process of instituting change by stepping outside of a situation and reinterpreting it what it means. It is the sudden aha of looking at things in a new light. The facts haven't changed but the way you interpret them is new. So it is basically changing your viewpoint on a specific situation by looking at it from another viewpoint. So in the Franklin's family, they could view Mike's addiction as an uncontrollable disease or he drinks because he is dependent on alcohol rather than something he does to irk them. They need to see that they are not responsible for Mike's addiction, but rather Mike himself. Of course, adapting to a new perspective is not easy. And in order for them to adapt with ease, Vatsavik considers an outside help or by therapy. Janet Bevin Bavelas is one of the co-authors of Pragmatics of Human Communication, together with Vatsavik in 1967. 25 years later, she reviewed the status of the actions that are focused on the interactional view and recommends modifying some actions of the theory. So the first theory, one cannot not communicate. Not all nonverbal cues are communication. Without a sender-receiver relationship, the cues are informative rather than communicative. So this table was shown earlier by my partner regarding the levels of communication of content and relationship. But Velas now thinks that the notion of functionally separates channels dedicated to different uses is wrong. She suggests a whole message model that treats verbal and nonverbal acts as completely integrated and often interchangeable. The content relationship distinction of another axiom is still viable for Babelas. She continues to believe that the content of communication is always embedded in their relationship environment. System theories involving people are difficult to evaluate because of their equifinality. A characteristic that means a given behavior outcome could be caused by any or many factors that are interconnected. Thank you so much for listening to our discussion and I hope that you have an understanding in regards to the interactional view of communication.